China's authorities have announced a major rescue package to buy unsold apartments and remove restrictions for home buyers. New Zealand's economy is soggy, but shouldn't expect help from a rate cut anytime soon. That's coming up in our five things in five minutes. And then in our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ Chief Economist for Southeast Asia and India, Sanjay Mathu, analyzes what labor costs across Southeast Asian economies say about their regional competitiveness and productivity. Since middle of 2022, when productivity slowed down because exports were slowing down, industrial output was slowing down, and yet you had this wage boom after the pandemic, we've seen that unit labor costs have increased pretty much in all economies. But first, in 5 and 5 with ANZ, China's authorities announced a major rescue package for its property development sector on Friday. The People's Bank of China will lend up to 300 billion yuan, or that's 42 billion US, to local governments and state-owned firms to buy unsold apartments off developers. It also removed minimum mortgage rates and cut deposit requirements for first home buyers to 15% from 20%. The deposit requirement for buyers of second homes was also cut to 25% from 30%. Here's ANZ Chief Economist for Greater China, Raymond Yun. This is the first time that at the central government level announcing a, I would say, the visible hand as a buyer to clean up the um, inventory problem. The major challenge is that how much would these type of property supportive measures induce genuine demand by the private sector? Whether these measures will improve the household expectation of property price? It is still a big question mark to us. Number two, Raymond doubts the package will encourage many private home buyers to change their views on the prospects for house prices in China, which have been falling. Most of the property support measures so far is pointing to support property developers. This the stocking plan is basically injecting cash to the supply side, to the developers. How would that change the household expectation about the properties will still be a big fundamental question uh, by the policymakers. If investment yields continue to be very low by putting a dollar, putting a yuan to property investment only generate uh, a small amount of rental yield, then this is probably not a good investment proposition to home buyers. China's property development and property sector rose on Friday night in stock markets in China. And global stocks ended last week at or near record highs, with investors more confident the Fed can cut once or even twice this year. Here's ANZ Group Chief Economist Richard Yetzinger. We've got a bit of a sense that the Fed can cut this year. I think it's a chink in the window rather than opening the window um, wide, but certainly retail spending was a bit softener and showing the sort of softness you might want to see for the Fed to clearly be about to ease. And the CPI, at least, was back to a bit of a softening track after those surprises of of a few months in a row. Uh, It hasn't cemented a Fed easing yet, but at least it certainly argued against the complete absence of easing this year. Number four, there's plenty for interest rate watches to focus on this week in Australia and New Zealand. The Reserve Bank of Australia releases its minutes from its last rates decision on Tuesday. Here's Richard again. In Australia, it will be the the Reserve Bank of Australia has played its cards very close to its chest. Uh, For the minutes, um, it will be, I think, an assessment about how much was a rate hike actually discussed. There was an acknowledgement that it was discussed. My sense of things is it, it was discussed in a passing way rather than in a serious we might actually need to do something way Um, but I think we need confirmation of that. Number five in New Zealand the Reserve Bank is expected to hold its official cash rate at 5.5 percent and forecast an unchanged rate into next year when it makes its decision on Wednesday even though the economy is very soggy. Here's ANZ senior economist Miles Workman on why the Reserve Bank will be cautious. The big picture story here is we've got all these drivers of economic momentum. Uh, over 2022, 2023, they were all kind of moving in opposite directions. Uh, and in 2024, the ducks are now starting to align into a, a more of a southbound uh, direction, which should keep the economy running below its potential level, which would therefore gives us confidence that disinflation is certainly in the pipeline, which is ultimately what the Reserve Bank's looking for. 
Miles Workman there. Now, on our bonus deep dive interview, ANZ Chief Economist for Southeast Asia and India, Sanjay Mathur, analyzes unit labor costs to compare the competitiveness and productivity of Southeast Asian economies. Unit labor costs are basically the compensation you give to labor divided by the productivity of that labor employed. And that is a very useful measure of looking at the fact whether you are sort of giving wages that are in line with the productivity or the output per worker. And that sort of further goes on to define whether the corporation itself or the employer is making adequate profits or not. And the second thing is that when you compare this, it's an alternative measure of looking at competitiveness across economies. Now, for some reason, the data is not adequately available. We do not have very detailed labor market data as you would in advanced economies. So there's only a handful of Asian economies where you get this data. Now, in terms of trends, it's been quite interesting that since middle of 2022, when productivity slowed down because exports were slowing down, industrial output was slowing down, and yet you had this wage boom after the pandemic, we've seen that unit labor costs have increased pretty much in all economies. The only two where you did not see or you saw a rather flattish trend were um, Taiwan and Malaysia. So why has there been this divergence between these economies since 2022? The reason for it is that wage growth in neither of the two economies was particularly aggressive. At the same time, productivity held up relatively better than the others. In some ways, if you look at Malaysia, its exports slowed, but they did not drop off a cliff. And some of its output is also geared towards a domestic economy. On the other hand, if you look at Korea, we saw a very, very steep export downturn. The same goes for Singapore. And Singapore also has economy-wide data. Most economies, you see unit labor costs are produced only for the manufacturing sector, but here you get it for services and for construction. And you can see that Productivity had slowed quite a bit, but there was significant pressure on wages during this period. So this upwards trend since 2022, is that going to turn and is it an export story? It is an export story to a large extent. What we have seen is that export performance across Asia has turned up. Of course, the pace of improvement differs across economies and in some economies, you still find that exports growth is still negative. But nonetheless, the trend is one of improvement. The second is that most employers are now talking of normalizing wages. We do not see any forecasts which are pointing to rapid increase in wages. Unemployment rates are not falling anymore. And that would suggest that, you know, the kind of tightness we saw in the labor markets that allowed them to improve their bargaining power, that is also receding to a large extent. So was it more of a pandemic-related shift than a structural shift? We think so. That is the case. And I think that Singapore is probably the best example of this because labor force growth had really slowed immediately after the pandemic, but now it's normalizing. The job vacancy to unemployment ratio is now also easing quite a bit. And that means pressure on wages is going to ease. And at the same time, what we are seeing is that exports are turning up. So your productivity is going up and wages are coming down. Sanjay Mathu there. I'm Bernard Hickey. That was 5 and 5 with ANZ for Monday, May the 20th. Catch you tomorrow with a deeper preview of those RBA minutes. This podcast contains general information only, not investment advice. You should obtain advice for your personal circumstances before making any investment decisions. Please view the podcast disclaimer available via your media player or email.